Joe is back to his best. Newcastle are back on top. Can the dog stop him from Knights? Knights Friday Night Football. Knights Bulldogs is next. And Sunday, 6.30, it's Broncos Eels. Love the game. Well, now we must leave Queensland and New South Wales viewers for Friday Night Rugby League, but you will not miss out on anything. Immediately following the game, we'll be back with all the Commonwealth Games action for you. Friday Night Football, brought to you by Bundaberg Rum, true supporters of the NRL. Bunnings Warehouse, where lowest prices are just the beginning. Amy, lucky you're with Amy. Holden, drive on. The Mail Intelligence Division. And 4 and 20, the great Australian taste. versus the Bulldogs. That's my team. Friday Night Football on 9. Very much the norm on a Friday night here at Energy Australia Stadium. Another impressive crowd and a great atmosphere for this round three clash which sees the Newcastle Knights play host to the Bulldogs from Canterbury. Good evening, thanks for joining us. Friday Night Football here on 9. And a clash tonight which sees two sides who between them scored 117 points last weekend do battle. Obviously not many changes in either camp and this is the home side. That fullback Milton Thiday on the wings, English international Brian Carney, David Siege comes in for the suspended Anthony Quinn on the other flank. The centre pairing Matthew Gidley alongside George Carmont, the 5'8 Kurt Gidley, the halfback and the skipper Andrew Johns. A back row Regan Tanner at lock, Steve Simpson and Kirk Reynoldson. And the front row is the evergreen Craig Smith, Josh Perry, Danny Bedeiris and Hooker. And the interchange tonight, all forwards, Adam Woolno and Daniel Toller, Riley Brown, Todd Lowry. They are coached by Michael Hagan. And Phil Gould, one of your old clubs, the Dogs, last week, back to their aggressive best. They were absolutely sensational against the West Tigers, blew them off the park. And we know when the Doggies strike form, they can usually hold it for quite a while. Big test tonight here at Newcastle. Here's their team. At fullback, it's Luke Patton, Hazamel Masri and Matt Utai on the wings. In the centres, and it's Andrew Emilio and Willie Tonga. The 5'8 is Daniel Holdsworth. I like the way he's developing for his new club. And the halfback is Brent Sherwin. In the back row, it's Willie Mason, Andrew Ryan is the captain, and Tony Grimaldi locks the scrum. In the front row, Mark O'Murley, number 15, gets a start in the run on side. He'll be happy about that. Corey Hughes, the hooker. Roy Azatazi in great form. And on the interchange bench, Rennie Matua and Chris Ahmed, Adam Perry and Nate Miles. They're coached by Steve Folks. Phil Gould, thank you very much indeed, as Andrew Ryan takes the Bulldogs out for this third round encounter. Peter Sterling and Phil in the box tonight. Matthew Johns on the sideline. And I often wonder what thoughts are going through his mind as a commentator these days at Newcastle and those memorable days back in the late 90s. Asatasi's been playing well. Ryan, part of the back row that is formidable. Grimaldi, Ryan and Mason and O'Mealy in the run on side. Many people predicted he would. And Ahmed goes back to the bench. Big win against the West Tigers last week. Their first in eight matches, would you believe? He's got the number nine now, Hughes. Battle between him and Perry. And Andrew Jones. Two points away from 2,000 points for a single club. 
they'll come tonight. Unbeaten the Knights. Endeavouring to become only the second team ever to go from Wooden Spoon to Premiership. The Magpies did it in 33-34. Craig Smith, former Dragon, had a problem with lifting the knees, if memory serves me correctly. Coming your way. Johns gets us ready. They're going to run towards the South Newcastle. Stephen Clark, 268, first great game. Johns then starts us. Friday night football underway at Newcastle in front of a capacity crowd at Energy Australia Stadium. And Asatasi running an angle, then a swerve, and he's tackled. 12 metres out from his own line, pulled down. And tackled back there by Simpson, and then Hughes goes off to his right before turning it back on the inside. And that's Emilio, the centre, who's taken down in the second tackle. Now long ball, they are prepared to go wide early, Canterbury, third tackle, and their captain Ryan is put away. 21 metres out from his own line. Hughes onto O'Mealy now. And he runs straight into Craig Smith. Similar clash probably in many ways to the one with Gibbs the other night, but he finished up on the wrong side of the ledge, wrong side of the ledge didn't he, Bryce? 40 metres out from the Canterbury line. End of the first set for them, safely through it. And uh, both these sides obviously keen to control the football and uh, get the better of the, the territory. The 18 brings it back, David Siege. He finished up having an operation the same day as Andrew Johns, if memory serves me correctly, when they both did their knees. Must be some 12 months ago. Badiris sneaking out from dummy half. And really showing his hand. He doesn't normally run that, that soon from dummy half. As Smith goes back towards the play the ball area. We'll go down to Matthew in just a moment. Badiris keeps pumping away towards the blind side and finds Reynoldson, the former Melbourneian. As Melbourne and Newcastle two of four unbeaten so far. Badiris, a dummy, stands and offer. Comes back for Reynoldson. Reynoldson 25 out, stands, unloads. Then a nice little piece of work by Ty Thayday. It's been uh, picked up by Mason. But nevertheless, it had a lot of creativity. Matthew John sideline. Oh, sensational atmosphere down here, Rams. You've got to love it. It's great to be home. Look, I tell you what, you want to know the key tonight? That's the little men from the Knights. It's Johns and Badiris, Thiday and Carney. They'll be a real headache in the centre of the park. I'll put my neck out. If the Knights find rhythm early, they'll win this by quite a margin. Tonga. One of those that apparently the other code is a bit keen on. Now Asatasi. This pool has got a bit longer and it's gone green. It might need some out, might need some, some chlorine in it, I think. As the ball is punted down the ground and falling back for it is David Siege. And he comes away from his in goal. He'll get to the 10. Oh, ran into a good shoulder. Who got him there, Grimaldi? He's got the ball, Grimaldi, and it's a steal. He said, I've called it. In other words, he said, I've called Hill. And uh, the penalty goes to Newcastle. Well, he can't believe it, the number 13 for the Dogs. Tony Grimaldi driving. The ball came loose in the tackle. He's got every right to pick that up and score. Jeez, it was a good hit, wasn't it? Well, why wouldn't he have a look? Why wouldn't he go to the video referee to get a confirmation then? A try was scored then. So the back rower for the Knights is Regan Tanner. And he's right on halfway in front of the Eastern Grandstand. Another penalty to Newcastle against, against the Dogs for a hand on the ball when the man in possession was rising to play it. Well, how, could, how costly could that decision by Stephen Clark be? With Newcastle now, two penalties. Andrew Johns finding touch inside the 30. A set of six up their sleeve. It could be an enormous turnaround in the space of a minute. Here's Smith. Oh, and really came over the top of a very good tackle down low from Corey Hughes. And another penalty to Newcastle. Time out. Let's stay with the referee. Just listen to me. We him. No, you, you ran straight across. You, ran, you could have ran to the side of him. You ran straight across him and knocked him over. You say that's two in a row against you. Coming down, eh? You, mate, you take control of him. Uh, Thanks, mate. Andrew 
is going to kick for goal. Shot yes, he's indicated he's going to take this rather historic kick at goal. I'm a little bit surprised. I thought they might have gone for more early in the game. Now, this is David Seeds getting hammered by Grimaldi. There is no strip there. The ball comes loose in the tackle. And Grimaldi picks it up and races 10 metres. He knows he's OK. He just can't talk the referee into believing so. So, Johns aiming to become the first player to score 2,000 points for a single club. He's the... He's third on the all-time list of Premiership point scorers behind Taylor, Jason, 2107, and Daryl Halligan, 2034. Johns, from close proximity, doesn't very often miss them, and he doesn't. 2,000 points for a single club. Another moment in history for Andrew Matthew. Unbelievable, Rams. 2,000 points on every mate's first great debut. He scored 23 points on debut. He said to me after the game, Mate, this is easy. I suppose he's right. <laughs> it didn't look easy for the poor devil under that tackle from Tony Grimaldi. It was quite tough and quite unfortunate for Canterbury as well. But that's gone. Here's Perry with a bullocking run. It's more than that. It's Herculean. Big run, Perry. Good effort, front row forward. Five from the halfway. For Johns now to try and inspire out wide. Turned around by Kurt Gidley for the number 11. That's Steve Simpson. Origin player, Badiris, is captain at origin level. Tackled inside the 40 metre line. Canterbury's end of the ground, Newcastle running south. Johns now, 2 0 in favour of Newcastle, running back into the traffic zone, and Asatasi has got him. 30 metre line, centre of the ground. Badiris going left this time for Kurt Gidley, right thigh heavily taped. 22 away, still centre ground, the dearest back, answers the call of the captain, then Johns puts a kick up in the air, and up they go, batted down by Newcastle, comes down to Canterbury, and it's with Holdsworth, the number six. Utah. Picked up by Perry, what a good run by Perry, and Utah's hurt. Well, the Canterbury players were claiming at the end of the Perry run that he lost the football. Stephen Clark said he regathered it. But it's a tremendous hit up from a young man who's promised plenty for a while. With a run like that, you can see why. He slips back on the inside of O'Mealy, beats Asatasi. Willie Mason said he's dropped the football. Stephen Clark said no, he retained it. That's Larry Britton, is it not? It is. A bit concerned, it's like up around the rib or shoulder area. We'll take a break then and see what the result is with Matthew Utai when we come back. Seven, seven minutes gone, 2-0 in favour of the Knights. Welcome back to Energy Australia Stadium here in Newcastle with the Knights 2, the Bulldogs nil. but it's not good news for the Dogs. He's clutching at the, the floating ribs on the left side. Utah tackled by Simpson doesn't appear to be any problem until Perry comes over the top and adds his weight to the execution and Craig Smith was in there as well so it wouldn't surprise me if there's a broken rib there for Matt Utah Rennie Matua has come onto the side has come onto the field so I think the Bulldogs are down to 16 so they've had a rotten start haven't they as far as luck's concerned they've had none at all Penalty goes to them now. That might be that might be good for them because they're just outside their 30 metre point. Rennie Matura has gone into the far centre position, and Andrew Emilio has come across to this left side wing as the Bulldogs finally get something going their way. First hint of luck for them as Big Mason goes ahead. Steve Simpson launched himself like a missile. He missed the mark. He landed a few metres down the ground, as a matter of fact. Hughes gets it on, and now it's gone from Holdsworth back to O'Mealy. O'Mealy working in amongst the ruck, and then Mason got a ball away for Tonga. Tonga hard hit by Badiris. And he'll play the ball 20 metres away from the line. Mason running across at 45 degrees, tries to straighten off the right foot. He's held by Perry and by Smith and also by Thiday. They're close to the line. They're 10 out. They're in the middle of the park. Sherwin inside ball put down 
Word from downstairs, Utah has got broken ribs. So the dog's down to 16. This was the chance. If the big fella gets it on his chest, he'd set himself to run through a brick wall. Stay in, Tony. Scrum feed, Newcastle, loose head, Newcastle, centre ground, 10 out from their own line, leading 2 deal on Friday night football. Matthew John sideline, Phil Gould and Peter Sterling in the box. And he wants that outside leg of Perry's up. Back it up, boys. It's about the only thing they have to do these days in the scrum to make it legal is for the near side prop to have his outside leg forward, but you don't often see it. This is thigh day. 15 away from the line, their own line now. They're at the wrong end of the park, and that's a good shot. A good shot by Roy Asatasi and Willie Mason on Regan Tanner. Newcastle, though, making some good ground down that left side. Reynoldson plays the ball. Badira's a little dummy. Smith comes down the middle. And running a decoy was Kurt Gidley. Smith tackled by Corey Hughes. Badira's offloads. Perry. Five metres from the halfway line. And again, Hughes doing a, a big job in defence, blocking down the middle. As Johns puts a kick in that screws across the ground. And it's with Hazamel Masri. Four tries last weekend. This will be for a late hit on Andrew Johns. The crowd reacted to it. He got straight up to his credit. The camera guys have already pinpointed that O'Meal is the culprit. <laughs> it's a silly play. Just have a listen. Okay, all right. You, you've actually sidestepped into him, all right, and you did it late. You have ample opportunity to pull out. You can't do that, mate. If you want to keep doing it, I'll keep penalising you. And if I've got to keep penalising you, blokes are going to go to the bin. So, Andrew, you're the captain. You need to listen to this. You're, you're the captain. Tell these blokes to cool themselves, because if I've got to do it, I'll do it. The onus is on you. Yeah, big Mark O'Mealy having a smile at Andrew Johns there. He couldn't resist the temptation. He couldn't get there any quicker. Of course he got there late, but he just couldn't resist the temptation of letting Andrew Johns know what was happening. Matty Johns, that was right in front of you. Yeah, one of the, one of the things when you play at Newcastle is that the crowd really put pressure on the linesmen and the touch judges. Even if that was 50-50, I mean, the pressure they put on the referee blows a penalty. You've just got to be squeaky clean. It's a dumb play. The part that I can't quite fathom is that Steve Clark added to the evidence given by the touch judge. In other words, he saw as much as, if not more, than the touch judge. So here's Johns then from a similar position to where he brought up 2,000. He sends them out to a 4-0 lead, the home side, 11 minutes gone. Well, the best thing about this opening stance for the Newcastle Knights is that they've backed up their talk. The Bulldogs absolutely belted the Tigers off the park last week. Everyone was talking about their aggression, but the Knights forwards have come out in the papers this week and said, bring it on. We're not going to be intimidated. You're in our backyard. We've got our mums and dads here. You're not going to get stand over the top of us here. They've backed it up. Holdsworth, you weren't thinking of bringing the mothers and fathers on, were you? Very parochial here in Newcastle. There's Perry with a, a throw down. This will be a try if Elmadri steps. He steps twice. Did he make the line? I think he might have. Elmadri, I think, has capitalised on a silly pass by Josh Perry and then a mishandle. Well, Hazem Elmadri is in no doubt that he has crossed. We saw Josh Perry run 40 metres from a restart. Now he's throwing a pass four metres from his own line and presented a gift, it may seem, to the opposition. Friday catches, as we saw earlier, gives it to Perry instead of busting tackles on this occasion. He's confronted by Rennie Matua. Grimaldi comes in, pops a pass to no one over the shoulder of Kirk Reynoldson. It's missed by Carmont, not by Hazmel Masri. And he's a great finisher. He does get over the line where other players wouldn't. I think it's on the line right at the death. Yeah, I think he's got a bit of the chalk there. Gus, an opinion. Try. 
It's a try and it's a blow to the Knights. Just talking about the great start that they've had. Josh Perry's last run was so good. And then a brain snap. No need for it. And this has a Mel Masri. I said last week, he'll crawl in under your door even if the door's locked. He can get in anywhere. Try. <laughs> Quite a finisher, Hasamil Masri, 34 points last week. They've scored 12 tries this year, the Bulldogs. He's got half of them. One of the rules of rugby league is that if you're going to throw a pass, you, you pass to a man in a better position than yourself. And that wasn't the case with the Josh Perry offload. Well, in reality, they should have scored two tries by now in exactly the same position on the football field had the referee have seen that a tackle from Grimaldi had dislodged the ball from the carrier very early in the game, they would have been over and El Masri would have been taking his same shot at goal from the same position, I should say. 100 points he scored up until tonight against the Knights. Make it 104. He turns 30 next Friday. One of the great ambassadors for this game and a wonderful ambassador for Canterbury. He's just outside the 20-metre line and he's... About 18 from touch. Has him in front of the big grandstand, the new one. It's on its way, and it looks okay. Just squeezed it through, Matthew John sideline. Yeah, I was talking to Craig Smith and Michael Hagen before the game, and they said, this is a big night for Josh Perry. He knows that the Bulldogs forwards are going to take it to him. He started the game so well. He's got so much ability, but he lets himself down. In the past, he let himself down by giving away a silly penalty. A head-on tackle will get sent off or sent to the sin bin, or a silly pass just like this. Consistency. Probably didn't help George Carmel trying to pick it up either. If he'd have dived on the ball and just made a bird of it, would have negated that mistake as the Knights come up with some good defence now O'Mealy loses the football well, that's the second time I must say the first time that he put it down O'Mealy it was a shocking pass but that one looked to me like it hit him right in the chest and this gives the Newcastle side wonderful field position look at it they're 15 out centre of the ground take your pick wide blind side if you like on the right winning the scrum they go left and uh, Johns hits Kurt Gidley right in the middle of the target. Play by Gidley. This is Carmont with a little stutter and tries to dance his way through there. Eight away from the line. Guderas for Johns. Johns lets two go. Now Simpson, he's put the winner in. Newcastle have gone in to score. Brian Kearney, the Englishman, has finished it off beautifully. Oh, lovely work. Couple of decoys. Back to Big Simpson. Well, a great decoy there, Ray, was Danny Badiris. He went through, and the man opposite him went in towards the ruck area. It's a great pass from Andrew Johns as well. So he frees it there. In fact, it's number three going in, taking the man through. And you can see that this player has come in well off where he needs to be. And as play continues, the second man pass, all of a sudden they create a two on one. A great decoy from Matthew Gidley, and that opens it up for Carney's second for the season. Well, they scored 70 points against the Raiders last week, and a lot of them just like that. A simple decoy play, well executed. And over the years, when the Newcastle Knights have been their best, no one does that play better. With a ball player like Johns, who commands so much respect, with a centre like Gidley prepared to, to run a decoy run, oh, it does attract defenders. It was like shelling peas last week. They probably came out tonight to target Matt Utai. He's left the field with broken ribs. Emilio found himself out there in no man's land. And I think Andrew Johns has said to his players, we'll be coming back this way again. Gus, the thing I like about the Newcastle side is that they're coached that nobody is a decoy. When you've got Andrew Johns with the football in his hand, he will sometimes make late decisions. If you think you're a decoy, you won't expect it. Every player in the Newcastle side around Andrew Johns knows that they could get the football at the last minute, and it will be because of a decision made by the best decision maker in the game. Who is about to take this conversion attempt on Newcastle's first try. It's long and low and misguided. 
Matthew John sideline. What a story it is, Brian Carney. A fantastic story. Five or six years ago, this bloke's in Ireland playing Gaelic football. He went to a pub after the game, as they do in Ireland, have a few Guinnesses, and he sees State of Origin on television. He says, I like this, I'm going to play this, and here he is. Great story. So the Bulldogs had the lead just for a brief moment. That breeze, that breeze seemingly pulled that ball down very quickly. Matthew, stay with me when I get a chance to talk about that wind and just how big a factor it might be. Ball played there by Carney. Now for Perry, starting to rumble up the middle again. Just inside his own 40 metre line, played back for Baderas and then Craig Smith with his hands out. Come on, give me the football and Big O'Mealy, who's been in the middle of this game with pluses and minuses. Baderas, seven metres into Canterbury territory. This is the end of the tackle count for Newcastle. Johns wants it, now to the right foot. Way she goes, high. Down it goes towards Patton. It's been allowed. The number three, Matt Gidley, I don't think got there in time. I think we've got a knock on too, Ray. I think the Knights players played at the ball while it was in the air. It comes down between Emilio and Patton. They both just look at it, and I think there's a knock on there from Kurt Gidley. And it's then batted dead by Emilio. Yep. If there's a last touch from Gidley, no, nah, I think it was dead before Gidley touched it. It'll come back as a knock on against Gidley rather than a 20 metre tap. Yeah. Definitely no try. That should be the call. You're trying to get the ball. That's why Video referee was also used in that last try from Carney. They had a look to see if there was any obstruction. The 20 metre restart is signaled, so it's actually not a knock on by, by Gidley in the field of play. Yeah, I think that's a wrong call. Gidley's knocked it on in the field of play. Sherwin has a shot for the line, and this might be out. Oh! Out on the fall from the middle of the 20. Presentation for Newcastle. And we should just point out for our fans at home that if Brent Sherwin can find touch in the field of play with that kick, they get possession with the restart where the ball found touch. They've used it before with great success. If you saw that off the boot, it was going to be long from the moment it left. Probably the most memorable of those kicks was oh, Brent Finch at yeah, Canberra. Yeah, can, yeah. He, he wants you to stop talking about that. Well, I, I think it's a great play, but there has to be a sense of timing when you do things like that. The Bulldogs have just dodged a bullet. They've allowed a bomb to bounce in front of their own post. Hands have gone up. Well, it's no try. OK, we've dodged that bullet. Let's hold on to the ball. We're behind on the scoreboard. I see no value in that decision from Brent Sherwin. So, Johns steps up to the plate, says thank you very much, and puts another two points... On the Knights total, they lead by 10 points to 6, 17 gone. Matthew, I was interested to know what that wind is doing down there. Yeah, well, the wind rope's actually at the moment. It's going to be significant. It's behind the dogs, but it's growing heavier by the minute. You, you saw with the kick with Sherwin, it got right underneath the ball and blew it out, blew it out in the full. So with Andrew Johnson's kicking game, they could stuff this game out. It's certainly not a night to be wearing a toupee. Be careful. And Rabs lane four and five in the middle of the field looked to be the fastest to me. <laughs> yes. This is a nice corridor down there, Peter, you're quite right, as Tanner is tackled inside the 30 metre line over on the eastern side of this, this wonderful arena. I haven't been here to see the completed article, but it's just a magnificent structure over on the eastern side. And well done to the Civic Fathers for eventually giving the Newcastle football public what they rightly deserved. So here is Smith now looking for the halfway line and he's pulled down by Roy Asatasi together with Tony Grimaldi. Johns onto the right foot again and as Matthew pointed out they're running into the breeze the Knights as Patton is tackled. In fact watching that kick that Patton allowed to bounce reminded me of a night here when Andrew Johns sent Clinton Shavovsky home to Parramatta with a giant sized migraine. Some of you might remember the night I'm talking about. Here's Ryan playing the ball, the Canterbury captain near the halfway line, Holdsworth, and then O'Mealy. O'Mealy is pulled down right on the halfway line by Smith and Simpson. Play back to Hughes, and off now for Mason. Mason goes straight up on the edge of the play the ball area, 40 metres out from the Newcastle line. Hughes uses Sherwin. Oh, Sherwin fell awkwardly. That's a turnover. 
I don't think Clint Shabosky is the only fullback in the lead to come over from here with a migraine. Watching Danny Badiris out of dummy half tonight, you know these Bulldogs forwards wants to get up and smash his own forwards. He's playing very smart in the dummy half area. He hasn't sold one dump. He's had a few runs. He's giving the ball early to his forwards so they get momentum up and they can't get cheap shotted. He's playing very smart. The New South Wales Australian hooker, Danny Badiris. He was credited with three runs out of dummy half last week. He came up with three in the first five minutes tonight. He's come on inside to David Siege. Beats another, straightens. Siege is going pretty close to all the way. Yes, they're over. Did he get it down? No, he lost the ball. Danny Badira is appealing to Clark to have a look at it. I think he's claiming strip. I think Danny Badiris is claiming strip. He started it off again with a great dummy half play down the short side. Brett Sherwin feigning to kick for touch. I don't think he was going to do it a second time. But I think he's saying that he got stripped here. As the play comes down... Oh, gee, I can't believe he wouldn't have a look at that. Well, if you've got if to you've have got a look. capacity to do so. That's amazing. So a call that time that went against Newcastle quite definitely. Don't get me wrong, Stephen Clark might be 100% right. If we go to another angle, he might have dropped it, but it was worth a look. Same with the Grimaldi one in the opening couple of minutes. Here's David Siege coming away from his own line and a ring of blue and white jumpers waiting for him out on the 10. Friday comes away from dummy half now. Hughes underneath, Asatasi over the top. As uh, Carney goes in to dummy half. Had to go a long way to <laughs> put himself in that position. Tackle just outside the 20 metre line. Tackle by Grimaldi. This is Carmont. 30 metres away from his line. They've won eight of their last nine matches. Newcastle. It's a nice record, isn't it, for a team that picked up the wooden spoon. Smith on the 40 metre line. Johns driving it down straight to Patton. Patton taking it on the feet on his own 20 metre line. Comes to Kurt Gidley and Gidley puts him down. Played back for Emilio to come away. Emilio dancing across the 30 metre line. Gets it out to 40. And will play the ball on the Western touchline. They're playing with 16 now. Canterbury have been for some time. Matt Utai broken ribs. Willie Tonga to play the ball. Corey Hughes, the dummy half. Mason wants it. Mason just catch and pass. Sherwin loses the ball. Clark says knock backwards. Can't disagree with him. Now Holdsworth from dummy half gets it away for Armit. And Chris Armit in his second year with the Dogs. The ball goes to Holdsworth who puts a little plugging, chipping kick in that finds the line. We'll take a break on Friday Night Football. 22 gone, 10-6 in favour of the home side. Matt Utai injured very early in the game. It was a really dusty start for poor old Canterbury because the commentary team feels they were disallowed at least the chance of examination by video referee a try. And then Utai got hurt almost immediately on top of that. So Michael Hagen of Newcastle. Bound for Parramatta next year. Up against Stephen Folks. They played in two grand final winning sides for Canterbury. That's another contest that's going on. Off the field of play. Madeiras using Steve Simpson. And this big, rangy Australian representative gets it out towards the 30 metre line. Now the number three, Matt Gidley, is bundled into the ground by Asatasi. Asatasi getting a blind, shy, a blind side shot on Matt Gidley. Johns. Hasn't that often been taken to ground? Hasn't that often reached the defence line? Now, Kurt Gidley, kick and chase. You get the regather, Willie. Kurt Gidley puts another kick on it. Beautiful kick. Carney's coming down the right side. It'll find time. Nice play. There was a big gap behind the defensive line. The fullback and winger were deep. And Gidley, look at this. There's plenty of space at the back there. He gets it up. He doesn't get the bounce that he wanted. Keeps it on the toe and can't keep it in the field to play. But that's confidence from young Gidley. A player of great promise. He showed it a couple of years ago. Been a little bit in the wilderness ever since. But Matthew Johns and Andrew Johns telling me earlier this year that his off-season has been terrific. And his first couple of games have shown glimpses of that promise we saw a couple of seasons ago. Patton. 
Terrell in front of his own uprights. Ten out from the line. Grimaldi has added another ten to it. Straight up the middle. Corey Hughes having a little look around. Chris Ahmed gave him a little decoy. Took a bit of heat out of it. Reynoldson made the tackle. Bad play the ball. Penalty goes though to the Bulldogs. Yeah, once you get a player lying in the hey, ball area, it will always go against the defender. The referee just telling the Canterbury side, you got the benefit of the doubt there. I don't know whether Reynoldson had a chance to roll to the side, but that's what the referees are looking for. Mason there. 38 away from the line. Smith and Tanner making the tackle. Armit with fresh legs. Taken down again by Tanner. Working well with Smith and Perry. They didn't get away quick enough. And there's a hand on the ball, I fancy, he's saying. Well, this is bad luck for Newcastle because the, the pass from dummy half on the previous ruck play was nearly a metre forward. And they've made the tackle and conceded the penalty. Oh, gee, that's a tackle by Johns. Joey Johns has given Holdsworth the best one he had in his bag. Now Asatasi. They've knocked back two points there, Canterbury. They must have a bit of wind in their sails here as Ryan has tackled. Well, they've had no rhythm in their game. They want some ball in their hands. That's what it is. Hughes again. To the right they go. To the middle. Holdsworth. On it goes again to Sherwin. Sherwin onto Grimaldi. Now it's away from Matua. And Matua pulled down five metres from the corner post. Long, lofted pass. Sends Sherwin jumping in the air. Patton is there. Now Luke tries to bust them. He's tackled. Penalty. Inside the 10 against Andrew Johns is the call. Is that your mark? Corey Hughes has got the mark. And he goes for it himself, driving. But that leg drive didn't carry him to the try line. A quick pass off the ground. Out to Willie Tonga. Gets rid of one. Doesn't get rid of Carney. Again played back to Hughes. And now the crosser goes to Holdsworth. And then away to Big Willie. And a nice tackle around the legs by Tanner. Smith over the top with Perry and Reynoldson. Then it's from Hughes and it's gone right. It's gone to Sherwin. Takes them on. Gets the ball back. Picked up by Armit. And he's tackled by Tanner. Five metres out from the line. Good defence, Newcastle. Now it's come away from Holdsworth. It's found the captain, Ryan, out in the centres where he loves it. And he's tackled ten metres out from the line by Padiris. Holdsworth now forced to kick. Goes over towards David Siege. And now has him, El Masri. It goes into touch in goal. It's gone out to the 20 metre play point for the restart, indicating that it all came off Canterbury. Those last two sets of six in defence have shown me that Newcastle have done a lot of work in the off season on their line speed. Last year they primarily slid in defence all year. I reckon half a dozen times in that set of six on the long side, they sprinted up quickly and cut the Bulldogs off. That's a real positive sign. They've done a lot of work in the off season on their defence. 10 6 in favour of Newcastle. Good first touch there from Adam Wundo into the game now for Craig Smith. There's a lovely offload there from Daniel Tolar as well. So Johns, tackled by Asatasi. And now it's out to Kurt Gidley, who goes back into the middle. Gets a pass to Fayday. Fayday's away. Fayday sets himself for the goal. He's gone in and puts it down. Fayday has scored for Newcastle. Fayday right under the black dot. 14-6 after 27. Well, this is reminiscent of Matt Bowen. And that's a wrap. He did it all himself. Kurt Gidley had nothing on his outside, threw the ball back on the inside, and I think we'll see the former Waratah beat about four defenders. Electric. Puts the foot down there, slices through. Made it look easy, ran away from them at the end. And I know that Matthew Johns, on one of the footy shows early this season, said that he is the greatest threat for Minich to Minicello for a representative jersey. Maybe that's why he thought so. He's quick. He's quick. As soon as he poked his nose through the front line of defence, having seen a fair bit of him at the back end of last season and early this year, you knew that he was going to cause them no end of trouble. Johns converts. Talking about the back end, that's all Canterbury saw of him. Thigh day, a clean pair of heels. He looked like he was surfing. 
in, out, away. Watch him. Oh, look at this. Matthew Johns. Oh, he's a hell of a player, Rams. I tell you, and a very good bloke as well. We knew when he left the Waratahs, he was fighting a lot of personal demons. He was actually up on the north coast playing park football. It was a journalist, Neil Jemison, who's a Knights nice fan, saw him play. He scored five tries that day and he alerted the Knights. The Knights took a chance. Hang now on, he's hang on, this chance. is out on the fall. They've done it again, Canterbury. They can't measure the breeze. Sorry, Matthew, but they've gone over the dead ball on the fall. Yeah. Hey, you were talking about demons, you know something about them. <laughs> so, so, certainly do. I've been a few the last couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, Milton Thido, he's up on the North Coast. He's, he's, he was scoring five or six tries a week. And uh, Neil Jamison said to the Knights, you've got to have a look at this bloke. They took a chance on him, now he's taking his chance. And he is, he's the biggest threat to Minicello. So Baderis, now Walner. 16 to 6. Canterbury have put a, a 20 metre restart and a halfway restart out on the full. Baderis looking sharp. And then it goes from Kurt Gidley. The bounce favours Newcastle. Now it's gone down within three metres of the line with Carmont. Played quickly and did he knock on Baderis? Baderis goes over. Clark wants to have a look at maybe a fumble that I thought I saw. But there's uh, a lot of confidence in the Newcastle camp. Well, it'll be either a fumble, Ray, or whether he's used the man playing the football as a shepherd. The Bulldogs' defence reacted quickly. Danny Baderis couldn't believe his luck. Here's the play the ball from George Carmont. That's OK. He's placed it on the ground, That's stood great, up. Great so far. The Canterbury player really hasn't cleared the play the ball area. Baderis... Oh, no. Well, that's fine, but did he get a touch on the football? when the, the ball was played back into the Canterbury player. Did Badiris get a hand on it? If he did, it's knock on. I don't think he did. There is a little bobble there on the ground. I don't know whether it's come from the heel of the Canterbury player or whether or not Badiris has given it the nudge with his hands. He's made a quick decision. Chris Waters, the video ref. It's a try. No problem. It's all green. 30 minutes. Well, he basically started that try and finished it to Danny Baderis. He was involved in the play before. He's just put a body feint on and four defenders have gone the blind side. And Baderis, who is such an integral part of the Andrew Johns game, don't ever think that he doesn't play a huge role in knowing when to pass the football to the number seven and when to go himself. He's a great player when he's fit and he looks very fit tonight. Andrew Johns has had a relatively simple night in the goal-kicking department. Many other presentations, he converts the try. 22 to 6, Newcastle following the match tonight. Back to the Commonwealth Games and we'll wrap up day nine action for you. Here's a break, back in a moment. <laughs> Quite unbelievable, that scoreline, 22 to 6. Canterbury watching that kickoff more wisely this time but I I don't know that there's 16 points in the game, not the game I'm watching anyway. Well, the problem is the Bulldogs keep making silly mistakes and giving this Andrew Johns led side possession when they're in front on the scoreboard. If Andrew Johns is in front on the scoreboard, he just goes for the jugular and that's what's happened here. He and Badiris are carving them up. 17 is Todd Lowry over there. Interchange is rolling through there for you. Newcastle rolling up to the halfway line. That was a very good shot. Matua and Grimaldi on Carmont. Now Johns puts it onto those sparkling boots of his and he puts it over the dead ball line. He'd be disappointed with that. He wanted it to lay dead in the in goal area. They've played smart here tonight, the Knights. They've taken on the physical challenge. They've dared the Bulldogs and taken them on. But they've taken them on in their own way. Plenty of dummy half running. And then they only give it to a big bloke when they know he can get over the advantage line and do a little bit of punishment. They've been very smart about their football. 
the Bulldogs, no rhythm at all as yet. Armas about to play just outside the 30 metre line. Perry is on and Mason goes ahead. He's played without, without a change. 42 metres out from his own line. Perry has replaced Hughes. Ryan goes darting in there, running a bit of an arc. And it ends a couple of metres into Newcastle's territory. The home side out with a big break, 22-6. to six. And Mason has tackled now 40 metres out from the line. In 2002, they led 19-0 at half-time in Hasmel Masri. That sideline conversion. Some Newcastle Knights out there who were here that day. David Siege coming in from the left wing. He covered a lot of territory. His call was clear for five day. It's my ball, my ball, and he took it beautifully. In fact, the only time I've seen him play, he was playing at fullback. The 17 is Todd Lowry, and they're just outside their own 20 metre line. 22 to 6 to score. And Badiris decides to go to the blind, and Jones! Oh, it was a lovely cutout pass, and David Siege. Couldn't get hands on. Uh, he goes down the blind side, Andrew Johns. He's got inside runner, two outside runners. And the selection is just a flick of the wrist. What's this? Show inside, show the one, and then a little flick of the wrist, and he's got El Masri Cole on the outside. The winger can't handle the ball. Beautiful pass. Bulldogs need to strike back here. Seven minutes before the break, Madeiras, with a cut eye, has to go into the backfield to get that repaired. So they're down to 12 at the moment. So Luke Patton up into the back line. You can't get a pass away. The tacklers shortened his arms up. 31 metres out from the line. Holdsworth has done a lot of dummy... Oh, gee. Tonga was picked up and dumped. And I, I think Tola was on the ground and felt the full impact of it. Now it's Armit who's tackled. They're 15 out from the line. Six minutes out from half-time. And it's played back for the 16 Perry to go and use a decoy and give to Sherman, then to Mason. Mason... He went over the top of Andrew Johns, but he, he just hesitated his work long enough. Here's a penalty to Newcastle. It's against Mason, and now he's walked in. Frustration. Behind on the scoreboard, you come up with a big charge, you want to play it quick. The Newcastle player's in your way, you give him a shove, you get penalised, you abuse the referee, all the good work's undone. And that's the story of the Docks' night so far. All knocked down, I think. Yes, he's going to order there was a knock on there. Loose carry. Loose carry. A loose carry is the call from Stephen Clark, so he's going to give the loose head and feed to Canterbury. The benchmen, Asatasi on the left, Hughes the middle, O'Mealy, and the other bloke is Matt Utai, we believe with broken ribs, and we've seen the last of him for tonight. So Steve Folks is doing it with 16. Oh, Tong has put it down. Another example of uh, letting them off the hook. And here goes Carney, 42 metres away from the Canterbury line. Played the ball, it's gone to the blind side. Here's Matt Gidley. He takes it up inside 30. Tackled by Holdsworth, who I thought came up with the leg. Now it's gone to brother Kurt, and Kurt Gidley's tackled. 15 metres out from the line. On the right-hand side, long ball, floating in the wind. It's gone over to Tolar, and he's tackled 10 out from the line. Badiris comes back blindside for Gidley to Gidley and he'll score! Matthew Gidley has scored on the western side of the ground. Gidley, Inc. have done it again. One on one miss there. Matt Gidley, footwork too good for really Tonga. But again, the fact that Andrew Johns was left side of the field, Kurt Gidley the confidence to take on the responsibility of calling it to the right-hand side. Andrew Johnson's a great ball player, but he's also a tremendous decoy. That was the initial knock-on. It's a double barrel for Willie Tonga. Gave them the football, and he's the man who misses the tackle. Gidley, the cutout pass. Matt Gidley is already on the outside of his centre and is able to drag the leg out of the attempt to get the all-important try just before half-time. That's what the Dogs desperately needed to get back into this game. He's looked very good also this season, Matt Gidley. Similar seasons last year for Canterbury and Newcastle. Wretched seasons with injuries. Their big-name players were the main sufferers. And John's now looking for six from seven. From near the sideline, this looks better. Well, just 
just on Willie Tonga on that trial, he's come out and he's said through the week that he's still finding his way with his knee, that his confidence isn't full, hasn't fully returned. For his opposite, Matt Gidley, look, that's a, that's a red rag to a bull. Expect Gidley to really attack Tonga through this game. Just remember, guys, though, a few years ago, 19 nil to the Knights at half time. The Dogs managed to come back. Can they do the same tonight? You and Sterling seem to have a thing about reminding us about the night that has them got them out of jail from the sideline. I, it was memorable. It was? I, it was. I can still see the kick. It was uh, world record stuff, wasn't it? Here's a penalty going to Newcastle. 21 metres out from their yeah. own line. And he's just picked up a little bit of a high tackle. And it's on Chris Armand coming up in nines. Holden half time. Carlton Mid, the player cam. It's a good drink that Carlton Mid, by the way. Andrew Johns is featured on that. You'll see some lovely stuff. Oh, what a shot. Willie Mason. Willie Mason, is it? Thanks, Pete. The Bundy big plays. The Bundy big plays. And Matt Johns and Phil Gould will talk tactics. We've got, as I said, a lot of the beverages sponsoring Friday nights. It's lovely to have them on board. Like Jim makes you thirsty. Lowry plays it on the 40 metre line. Johns. Then it goes through to Kurt Gedley. Here's an intercept coming for Hazem. Leaves it on the ground. Now it's David C. Bunny hops away. Takes it to the 30 metre line when Rennie Matua pulls him down. Siege a little bit slow to rise. Kurt Gidley. And it goes to Adam Woolner. Centre ground, 30 out from the line. Watching the timepiece, one and a half minutes to go. Knocked down by Canterbury. Just time to form a scrum. Loose head and feed for Newcastle. This is where Newcastle should be rushing to set the scrum. Give themselves a full set of six. This was the tackle, Willie Mason dropping the shoulder into Adam Woolner, driving him sideways, copybook stuff. John's waving Friday out into the centres. And here's the pass coming straight from the scrum, wide for Kurt Gidley. Now for Fiday, the man with the lightning feet. And uh, was he held? Well, he played the ball anyway. Kurt Gidley makes a dart towards the, the goal mouth area. He's 12 out and looking to unload the ball. He's put down eventually. 15 out from the Canterbury line. Seconds away from half time. The Derrick's for Johns. Johns gets it back. That is Lowry. He's put down. Close to the line, nine metres out. The dearest. Now Johns. Then it's going to Kirk Gidley. On the bounce. It's picked up by Fiday. He's scored number two. Melvin Fiday has scored another try. This is an amazing resurrection by Newcastle. 32 to 6. They both won matches last weekend by almost record margins. But tonight. Newcastle are giving them a thumping. They Can it. this bloke play football? The bounce favoured him, but you've got to put yourself in a position to get that bounce. Plenty of bodies in motion, and again, it's the unfortunate number four, Willie Tonga, who misses the tackle. I think a lot of people are going to miss tackles on Milton Friday this season. Difficult to get, gets over in the corner. Matthew Johns, you must be enjoying what you're seeing on the sideline. Yeah, you're going to love this if you're a Newcastle player. Look at the boys here. They're walking around at halftime. There's no better feeling when you play for the Knights. You play on a big night of Friday night football against a contender. And you're leading at halftime and you walk off to this. Have a look at the big crowd here at the grandstand. I can tell you when the boys walk off, they'll be on their feet. And expect a big second half from the Knights. So possession running at 60-40 to Newcastle. 23 sets. They've completed 19. 19 sets Canterbury. They've completed only 12. And it just keeps getting monotonous, doesn't it? <laughs> From the sideline, he's banged it over. Another one for Andrew Johns. What a half of football for him and the Knights. 34 to 6 in front of a capacity crowd. The Knights 34, the Dogs are 6. Holden half time is next. Trotter to McLean, Blocker McLean through to Turner, oh Big Finn, support is there, Malkai through the gap, he puts the foot down, Malkai for the corner, try, how good is this Holden team? Deris for Johns, 
John lets two go. Now, Simpson, he's put the winner in. Newcastle have done him to score. Ryan Carney scoring the first try for the Newcastle Knights. That said, the crowd alight also set the Knights alight. They lead 34 points to six here on Friday Night Football. Holden half time. Here's the score breakdown. The Knights, 34 points to six. What it doesn't show there is how smart that the Knights have played in control of the ball. And Matty Johns, the Bulldogs have not been able to get aggressive in defence because the Knights have run from dummy half. Danny Medeiros has been super out of out of that dummy half position. They've just played too smart. A little, a little bit too clever for the Bulldogs tonight, Gus. They come out, they made all the headlines saying we're going to bash the Bulldogs. Bring it on. But they haven't played that way. They don't need to. They're a clever side. They've got little men who can do the damage and they've done the damage. Are we talking rope and dope, mate? Are we say we want the fight and then not fight? Play smart? They're not that clever. Not that clever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's go to the Carlton mid player, Cam. It's going to be Andrew Johns tonight. Superlatives have rained over the years about this player. You know him better than most. The question I want to ask ask you is, it's probably four or five seasons since you've played with him, since you retired at the Knights. How's he changed from the young player who came into grade to the halfback you see today? When he first came into grade, Gus, even when I was playing with him, he wanted to do everything with his body to make, to impress. You know, he, he's tough mentally and he's tough physically and he wanted to take the line on all the time. These days, Gus, he knows he doesn't have to take the line on. He's one of these rare players who can play in a dinner suit and dominate a match. My experience with you two, when I first met you two, you were probably the dominant partner in the pair in that you were telling him where to get to on the field and you were telling him what to do. S still do. <laughs> yeah, still do. That's changed a lot over the years now, hasn't it? It has. Look, you know, when he came into grade, look, uh, I mean, the other thing he's changed is, is physically. He was a little roly-poly and he was immature. But now he's, he's such a tremendous leader. He pushes that side around the park and he... And he's one of those rare players. He's not only brilliant, but he's tough. He's the toughest player I've played alongside Gus. Yeah, watch his defence. It's just... All right, with well, the cloud have been loving this first half. The Bundy big plays will show complete dominance by the Newcastle Knights. A couple of unlucky moments for the Bulldogs, but plenty of mistakes as well. This could have been so much different had this try gone to the video referee, Tony Grimaldi. I think it was a fair try. Yeah, they, they, they should have at least had a look. It was a knock-on, it was a fair try, and that led to this, Gus. Andrew Johns, 2-0 to the Knights. And that was his 2,000th point for the one club that is himself a record and now running third in the, the most points ever scored. Big run from Josh Perry, which sent the signal to his other forwards. What we said during the week, is right, we're not scared of these blokes. Absolutely, that was the good side of Josh Perry, a great run there. Now this is the bad side, unfortunately. Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Perry. He goes up, and you know, a good good front row is around consistency. He didn't need to push that pass. He doesn't have to do that. It's not his job. And that led to the tie with El Masri. He's a freak, El Masri, how he gets through there. Marco Merley dropping the ball, knocking it on. That led to another try to the night shortly after. Yeah, a lot of the players having the drops here tonight. I think it might be something to do with the wind. And it led to this one. We saw last week the West Tigers, Gus, couldn't get around the up and in. The Knights have done it pretty easy. Yeah, they even do two decoy runners there and plenty of depth, plus an inexperienced winger on that side of the field. Now, Danny I thought this was worth a look, Gus. It was worth a look. Well, Danny Badira thought so. He got up and appealed to the referee straight away and says it was knocked down. I think I got it down, but no video referee there either. Now, this was a great piece of Milton Thider. And this is what the Knights have been all about. They don't want to put the, as you said, they don't want Smith and Perry up against the big guys. Use the quick guys, Madeira's Johns, and that guy, Thider, Gus, is a freak. I've just been so impressed with how smart they've played, particularly this fella, Danny Madeiras. He has not sold one dump to one of his forwards. He has never passed the ball when the Bulldogs were set in defence looking to come forward. And this is, a, this is the match. You've got, uh, uh, you got Matthew Gidley up against Willie Tonga. Expect to see a lot more of that. And hear this man again, Milton Thiday, Chris Lightning. He's had a big off-season under his belt and it's showing. See, this wind's getting strong. They lead 34 to 6 the Knights. They're still blowing us over here. They'll have it at their back in the second half. The Knights over the years have run up big leads at half time and then gone very quiet in the second half. What do you think they'll be saying in there now? Different side, Gus. Different side. They're a lot. Physically, they're prepared very well for this season. They're confident about their fitness levels and about 60% of the ball. I think we're going to see them come out and not fall into the trap they did, which they did early in the game against Canberra last week. I think they'll go on with this one. All right, well, I think the Bulldogs are shell-shocked at the moment. Everything they came here to do tonight, nothing. They've got no rhythm in their play. They've had no quality ball. Their defence has not been able to dominate the Knights like they would have liked. They're 34 to 6 behind on the scoreboard. They've got it all to do. Still big second half, though, for them. Yeah, it's a big second half. But, you know, you don't want to miss this. You know, this is going to be this is going to be sensational. Well, the Dogs come back, but even if they don't, some of the football you're about to see just might blow you away. All right, we'll be back on Friday Night Football very shortly after the break. I think the Bulldogs will give us something special. Don't go away. Great from the Holden team. Wonderful crowd. 34 to 6. They are thoroughly delighted. 90% of them. So 
we go into the second stanza with Tola. Tackled for the Knights. And this is Woolno. Second tackle of the second half. Little second man play then. With uh, Lowry playing it just beyond his own 30 metre line. Now Johns sending it down and it'll find touch. And it came to Hazem El Masri. Oh. He knew he had a, a mongrel of a ball coming at him and this breeze is strong. And it would have been a 40-20 if it had found touch inside the 20 metre line but the touch judge has said it's half a metre short. He's kicked from his own 32. When it bounces, it accelerates towards the sideline. And he's having a good time. So Canterbury with Rennie Matua. Almost out of the 30 metre line. Down by Newcastle's number 16, Riley Brown. And there's Tonga playing it on his own 30 metre line. This is Luke Patton. And a three man Newcastle. Tackle headed by Badiris and Gidley ending his progress. This is Chris Armit. A struggling run, but it's a good gain in ground. Almost to the halfway line. Then from Perry, a long pass, finding Sherwin. Sherwin to Miles. And Nate Miles he is put down on tackle number five. The dogs will be just happy to complete a set as uh, Sherwin. Puts his kick down the ground. The bounce was okay for Thigh Day. This is Carney coming away with the ball. 15 away from his own line. Scored a, a nice try after a well-constructed piece of rugby league inside him from Johns. Now George Carmont. 12 from 19 they completed in the first half Canterbury. In fact, I'm quite surprised that that was their count. I didn't think they completed that many. Played by Woolno on his own 30 metre line. The 15 is Tola. Almost at the 40. Fifth tackle. We've got a problem, Ray, too. Brian Carney is moving the field as Andrew Johns kicks inside the 40 again. Well, Masri will clean this up inside his own 10. Brian Carney has limped to the sideline, straight off, as Luke Patton is claimed inside his 20. There's Carney from the ground and Matthew would have spoken to him for sure Matthew what do you say yeah the drama is he got a bad whack on the leg just before half time and he's gone in there and the, basically he's corked his leg and it's got worse it's bled he's cooled down and he's come out in the second half and he just can't move it so they've got him off 34 6 and not a bad tactic so Mason quick hands through to Matua Castle 40 metre line play on the western side of this ground. Now Sherwin, little kick, but Kurt Gidley fell back and covered it up nicely. So Kurt Gidley will play the ball for Newcastle, 28 metres out from their line. And this is David Siege. Badiris for Johns. Side ball for Simpson. Not going anywhere as he runs into Armit's tackle together with Nate Miles. Here's Badiris again from Dummy Half. Incisive running from Dummy Half by Badiris. Kurt Gidley bumping and brushing and bumping and brushing away again. Now Tanner. Just making the point that not once has he sold the duck to an offload. Tanner through to Johns. Now that's very high, and underneath it over there is Emilio, he did magnificently. And then ridden into the ground over there on the far side of the ground by Riley Brown. 30 metres off their own line now, Canterbury. They're going to see a lot of this end of the park, I'm sure, given the, the breeze that Johns and Newcastle will enjoy in the second half. And his defence is backing up the kicking game too. This Newcastle speed of line in defence is the best I've seen it in years, and I mean years. 
played by Miles and Sherwin takes it up and steps off his right foot and then lays the ball back on the turf. Picked up here by Grimaldi and Grimaldi runs into Badiris and not often do they go through him. It's a penalty to Canterbury. Adam Wilmot, get it now. That's uh, Wilmot penalised for being up around the neck, neck and head area. It's not a grapple tackle as such but they made it clear that apart from the grapple tackle, you won't be able to handle the neck or the head of another player unnecessarily. So Myers was taken down by Tolar and Badiris. Badiris racking up plenty of tackles. Here's Ahmed. And Tolar again is there with Simpson and Badiris. Now the Dogs with a chance. Sherwin, inside ball, Mason. Tries to trundle over the top of Tanner. Tanner did well. Now the 16 has a dive. Loses the ball in goal. Adam Perry it was. Well, he was forced to have a go from dummy half because he was late for his assignment. The ball was played and laying there for an age. And he was too slow to get there. Had to barge over. Then lost the handle on it. Mason looks as though he's coming from the field. Castle trying to come down the left side. Go on, Gus. Canterbury player. I'll leave that to you, Gus. Yeah, you've got a dummy that has a Mel <laughs> We'll say it for the first time this year. If you've got two on one, throw a dummy. Speaking of wingers, there's been a reshuffle with the loss of, of Carney on the far side. Gidley has spent a fair bit of time on the wing, but Riley Brown is also playing out there as well as George Carmel has come short side. 30 away from his own line, George Carmel. Didn't know him without the ponytail, now Lowry. Interchange rolling through. And this fellow's played tough, and that's a good, strong tackle on him from O'Mealy. I'm talking about Tanner. Perry and uh, O'Mealy dealt it out then. It was a very, very strong tackle, but his overall game, his overall performance, the back row from Newcastle has been good. Tolar, and like Tanner, has been very good since he came on. I like Tolar as a player. Got good footwork, good hands, good idea. Now Johns, he gets an outside edge on it, and Emilio's under it. Uh, Matt Gidley went up like Rudolph Narayev and did a dance in mid-air with no ball. And it's a turnover going to Canterbury. Played there by the captain Ryan. And then Patton gets it off for Sherwin. And the tackle in the 17, Todd Lowry. So this is Emilio. Just stepping his way over the halfway line to the tune of a couple of metres into Newcastle's area. We'll know the chief tackler. O'Mealy now decides to run it up. But Tolar is there with Tanner. And Simpson gives them a hand as well. They're 38 metres off the Newcastle line. Armit straight and hard, and again Tolar is there with Simpson. In fact, this time it's Tanner. Now Sherwin, inside ball for Patton, intercepted by Tolar. Well, Gus said he's got plenty of footwork, and he runs about 40 metres down into Canterbury territory. Not supposed to do that, but he did. Johns, now for Kurt Gidley, stand and offload. Johns. Wide for Matt Gidley. Looks to offload. 25 out from the line. Tonga and Holdsworth. Simpson. Full head of steam. Trundles it up towards the 10. Good run. The nearest out from dummy half. Flick pass. Flick pass again. Now they've lost territory. Simpson will clean it up. Passes across to Smith. Smith runs at Miles. Miles and Armand have got him. 19 out from the line. Badiris, Johns, cuts one out, goes to Matt Gidley. Good tackle, Tonga. 12 out from the line. Now it's from Brown, back to Johns. Johns puts it up, the jump is coming. And oh, El Madri's <laughs> finished up with it after a Newcastle player almost certainly was going to score. We'll take a break. 34-6 in favour of the Knights. 
It's a line drop out to restart as we come back. 34-6 in favour of the Knights. He wasn't sure Stephen Clark had a rule on this one because there's no way Hazemel Masri takes this on the full. David Seeds loses it and that's how El Masri miss, ends up with the football so he's tackled in the in-goal area. Craig Smith is on, so too Josh Perry. The starting front row is out there now. He goes inside the 30. 28 metres out from the Canterbury line. Newcastle on the attack again now with Simpson. Running with renewed vigour this year. Vadiris, Perry, Perry. Look at him go, the big fella. Unstoppable at the moment. Seven metres out from the line. Vadiris, Johns, Johns. Some great footwork from Todd Lowry. Andrew John through the inside pass. I mentioned earlier how all the players in the Newcastle Knights nice team expect the football. This was the run preceding it. Josh Perry. This is what we want to see every week from this talented young man. Hit the ball forward. Take advantage of the talent. And then Andrew Johns, as he loves doing, working down a short side, a couple of dummies, the first one to Thido. It's a great move from Todd Lowry on Rennie Matua. There's the number 14 on the left of screen. Watch Todd Lowry, stands him up, comes back inside, slides underneath, slams it down. The bench has been excellent for the Knights tonight. I'll tell you what was a great play too. The ball from Andrew Johns, it looks simple, but he reacted to the defence. Sherwin raced up quickly and made him rush it. But he did it so calmly to put it back on the inside to Lowry. Lowry had plenty to do, but it was a great pass on the inside. Ninth shot at goal. Eight times successful. Andrew Johns. Matthew Johns is our man on the sideline. Are the crowd loving this? And don't they deserve it? Over 25,000 people here tonight, the Novocastrians. They work at the coal mines and the steel mills. They enjoy a beer on the weekends. And they love their football. You know, we played here one day against South Sydney, and it was hailing. And 12,000 people turned up to see Darren Albert get hypothermia. Well, that's a class act in itself. But he's right, you know. They'll come out in all weather conditions, these people. They just absolutely love their football. Canterbury giving a penalty here for a high shot. And we've had Tony Grimaldi say something that the referee didn't like. So a march of 10. Johns will pick up another 30. Was some... A belief that maybe the Knights might struggle tonight because they had the short turnaround. They played in steamy conditions in Canberra. Reynoldson winds it up. But Andrew Johns, he's now kicked 19 goals in five days. Medeiros, Perry. That's all you've got to do, Josh. Ram it up. Stick your head under your armpit. Don't worry about passing. Now Johns. Now they've got a hand on him. Hasn't been tackled very often. Doesn't have to be. Lowry, who got a try. Lowry, Tanner. Toller. Badiris. Now Kurt. Well, it's gone forward to a backing Tanner. Tanner was reversing forward. Reversing forward, up the field. Nice play again, well set up. Andrew Johns on the left-hand side of the field, but they put a set play on the right-hand side of the field. Kurt Gidley just runs across field a little bit, gets the ball on the back hip, couldn't quite turn quickly enough, and it's overrun. But it's still beautiful play, and it shows the Knights are prepared to play away from Andrew Johns and trust Kurt Gidley with the ball, as they did in the last try to tie day before half-time. Following tonight's game, we'll go straight back to... The Commonwealth Games as those tireless workers in Melbourne wrap up day nine down there of the Con Games. Now, here's Holdsworth trying to put a step on a lock forward. Day nine continuing from Melbourne and looking at some of the figures coming through. You people are, are watching it and obviously enjoying it. And thank you for that. Closing ceremony Sunday follows the football, that big one. 
from Brisbane, Brisbane and Parramatta, followed by the closing ceremony. 6.30 Sydney time, the football. 6.30 Sydney time, the football. And uh, that's after the news and then the closing ceremony of the Commonwealth Games from the MCG. Important game for both teams, that one. Both teams were beaten in round one, disappointing. Came back with wins in round two. Not all that great, but they'll be looking to peak in game three. Should be a good one. So Newcastle with the ball. 20 metres out from their own line, and that is Matthew Gidley who plays it back to his brother Kurt, now Craig Smith. And, uh, well, somebody in there went for a shoulder charge, which went horribly wrong, and Smith is eventually able to play the ball. Now Reynolds, and that shot from Matua got up a touch high. Almost to the halfway line. The man from Snowy River, Reynolds, plays the ball. Now, Harry, straight up the middle. They're galloping onto the ball, the Knights. They've got tremendous energy in their game this year. Kurt Gidley. Andrew Johns goes back, second man, five day. Touched by Canterbury in flight. Newcastle lose head and feed. Yes, Andrew Emilio on this occasion did a Hasmel Masri and put the hand out. And you would imagine they would continue to attack down that side whenever possible. Phil Gould pointed out he's a makeshift winger. In fact, the two players on that side in defence were the starting centres. We talk about a partnership in defence with players. They've had much time to work one out. Johns has decided to go straight to the blind side. Here's Matt Gidley. And it's a penalty going to Newcastle. Yeah, high shot, Daniel Holdsworth. See him again. Oh, yeah, he's got him right across the chin. They are playing so quickly, Newcastle. Canterbury are just becoming more and more frustrated. This is a tremendous effort by Newcastle. Cellar dwellers last year, major part of the year without Johns. Now they're favourites to win the competition. They were equal favourites coming into tonight, but I think the bookies might reassess again. Now, Kurt Gidley back across the ruck. John short ball, finding Lowry. Asatasi makes the tackle with Andrew Ryan. Zadiris, Johns, Johns for Friday. Put him down as Friday, not Friday. He's got a treble. The number one has got a treble. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Andrew Johns is playing like an 18 year old. He handles two plays in a row here. He gets belted on the previous play after passing the ball, jumps up. Comes down the short side, sucks in two defenders for all money. He's going to give that ball to Matt Gidley. For all money. And the Bulldogs bought it as well. And Ty Day just slices into the hole. Andrew Johns, two plays in a row, unbeatable. It's a great run from Matthew Gidley as well. He came from outside in. They had some Canterbury defenders going towards where the football was. They had Andrew Emilio staying with his winger. And then a yawning gap opened up for Milton Ty Day. His 11th career try hasn't been in our game long. We hope he's around for a long, long time. He's exciting to watch. He didn't seem to attract the same publicity when he made the move from that game to our game as our blokes do when they go the other way. But by Jove, I tell you what, he's, he's doing as well as a couple of those big names that went over the other one. This bloke is playing like an 18-year-old. He bounced up, he got belted in the... He passed the ball and got belted, jumped up and wanted it again. He's 40 in front. There's the kick. It's coming round. It'll be OK. Oh, yes, it's OK. Now from 10, he's got nine. Matthew Johns taught him how to kick goal. I did. I didn't teach him how to grow that beard, though. But look at this. He's built Friday. Now, the record for the club for tries is four. Jamie Ainsco done four. Ashley Gordon four. Darren Albert four. And surprise, surprise, Andrew Johns four. Now, Friday's got three so far. 20 minutes to go. The record might break. He's got five in him, I think. Craig Smith coming back, held a skelter. Gus is right that they are really, they're not cantering back, they're not trotting back, they're absolutely galloping back, Peter. Right, to some degree, this is an extension of what we saw in round one against Parramatta. They totally controlled that game against last year's minor premiers with their defence. They controlled the ruck area, 
And when they control the ruck area, they'll always score points. There's Johns raking it down the ground, and Luke Patton. That's a good catch by Patton. But the moment he looked up, there were three and four blue jumpers in front of him. They've put something in the water up here in Newcastle. Talking of things in the water, I thought Matthew was on medication when he tipped them to win by a big margin. Well, he's been on that water for years. <laughs> Is that what's, wrong with it? what's that water? 46 to 6. Asatasi to the 40 metre line. Craig Smith looks like he's been a good buy for them. I know he's in his second year with them, but he's done nothing wrong. Mason's underneath that pack of knights. Well, he looks five years younger than he did last year. Craig Smith. He looks five years younger than when he left St. George Illawarra. Or was it St. George? Now, Thigh He's really got the grandstand on his back now. Matthew Johns has tipped him to score five. He's doing well to last the game tonight now, Ray. The Hex. That's him. Played by Siege. There's Smith again. Hand in the air. Give me the football. Give me the football. Badiris. Why it goes for Lowry. I just can't believe what I'm seeing here because I don't think I did a Newcastle match last year. There's just so many of these new faces, new names that are playing. They're playing out of their skin. Badiris. Johns, there's the denominator. Johns, of course. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work that out. And what's Patton doing? He's worming his way up the ground. David Siege eventually stopped him by sitting on him. Now Rennie, Rennie Matua makes uh, a rare break for Canterbury. Now what's happened here? That play is 10 of the lock forward. It's okay, might have taken a bit of a knock, stunning knock. Now it's come across from Bill Masri to Mason. The pass was forward. They just can't take a trick. 46 6, here's a break back in the moment. Well, the backdrop of that Eastern grandstand. When are they going to call it the Andrew John stand, by the way? When does that ceremony happen? Does anybody know? I don't know, Ray, but I know next week he equals Tony Butterfield as the, the most amount of games for the Newcastle Club, 229. It's against the Warriors here, so that'll be a celebration as well. And he'll break it the following week if he remains healthy against the Dragons down at Wynn. Smith again. Reynoldson was riding shotgun on his inside players everywhere in support Badiris graceful I mean it's not a word you associate with rugby league he looks graceful Badiris and now here's Big Reynoldson see they're clutching and snapping at, at these tackles it seems as though they've forgotten that maybe they can't run without legs some of these bigger blocks look at this ball going over the back line for Gidley there's the famous flick pass from Gidley Trying to put Brown down the right side. Five day Johns. Johns has got Simpson. Simpson's got the ball. He's pulled down by Mason. Mason grabs him and says, come on, let's get out here and muscle it out. Johns then drops in on the blind side. Kicks towards the centre. Oh. Kurt Gidley's hit the uprights and gone to ground. As a task, he played the ball. Penalty, Canterbury. That was a brilliant kick by Andrew Johns, and it was nearly a tragic ending for both the Bulldogs player and Kurt Gidley. He's OK. Super kick there from Brent Sherwin. Going to get his side game. Picked up 45 metres there as Asatasi takes it over the halfway line. 40 out from the Newcastle line now. Seems like forever since the Bulldogs have had the ball. 46 to 6, the scoreboard. Hughes is back in the action. Mason running at Simpson. He beats Simpson, all ends up that time. Used him as a, a speed hump on that occasion, which Simpson won't be happy about. Now it's out to Sherwin. Let's the lock forward go. Picks up Patton, and Patton is held there by Carmont. He asked the question of Carmont, and Carmont responded. Now it's gone through from Grimaldi to Sherwin, Sherwin to Hughes. Now they might have developed something on the left side. Tonga gets it away. Emilio for the corner. That's a try. The dogs have crossed from...
for another try. Plenty of minutes in between them, but that's try number two. They went well from one side of the field to the other. They stretched the Newcastle defence, and again on that far side is where they've got the problem with Carney off the field. Riley Brown came a long way in, allowed Willie Chonger on the outside, and then Matt Gidley playing on the wing. Well, he had two on one coming his way. There was nothing he was going to be able to do about that. Well, I think the Knights just ran themselves ragged. They had so much ball, they wore themselves out. Andrew Johns going to the sideline now. In the pre-season, it was muted that when they got good leads on the scoreboard, this man would be sparingly used in the second half of games. And quite wisely... Matthew Hay uh, Michael Hagen is taking the opportunity to have his Knights finish this game without Andrew Johns and guarantee that the playmaker is there next week. Well, he asked Johns to have 10 minutes off at the end of last week against the Raiders, but Andrew said, no, I'd rather stay on. It's not easy to get him off, Gus. And the kicker goal just away. Kicker goal just failing. Well, if he walks off early in Canberra, there's not much of a reception from the crowd. But if he walks off early here at Newcastle, the crowd lifts and everybody's on their feet and he loves a grandstand walk. Having a peek over his left shoulder and a, a big, big smile to somebody seated down near the fence. Fide, who has scored three tries. Kicks off. Masri just missing with the shot. That's a Tassi. Down by Simpson and Kurt Gidley. This is Andrew Ryan running at Josh Perry, and Perry struggles to pull him down. He gets an assist eventually from Woolno. Played 35 out. Armour takes it over the 40 metre line. And Simpson again makes the tackle with Badiris. So look at their tackle count for me, Gus, would you? Particularly Badiris. Here's Mason. 21. Make 22. it 22. He just made that one as well. Now Sherwin. Sherwin out comes out, out the ball out to Grimaldi. Then to Rene Mateur, the big right hand in the face. And now Reynolds got him and grapples him down. Close to the Western touchline. Hughes. Sherwin. Sherwin puts it in the air. Leads the chase. Puts them on side. David Siege. Well done. Day. Trying to find a gap in behind to play the ball, and it's a penalty. Penalty to Canada. Mason reaching into the sky to pull down a bad pass. Three metres out from the Newcastle line. Just trying to get my arms around what that penalty was all about. There's a bat on by Holdsworth and a dummy by Ryan. The ball on the ground. It came off Newcastle. Togger looking for the corner pull down. Holdsworth. That's a Tarsi. Badiris came up out of the line. Now it's away from Sherman. Gone to Mason. They're standing and passing. It's gone to ground behind Grimaldi. Gets it off now to El Masri. And then Matua. And they'll finish up going into touch if they're not careful. But a lot of passing and no no progress at all by the dogs played by Matua now it's with Armut and they're 12 metres out and after they finish tackling him he's on the 10 metre line Canterbury who scored the last try from Hughes, Sherwin, Sherwin Holdsworth, Holdsworth pulled down by Kurt Gidley and by Badiris bad play the ball Danny Badiris deliberately knocked the football out of the hand. It was the last tackle. He'd be very disappointed with that. Not just the fact that he got marched, but also the fact that it was late in the tackle count. They only had to hang on one more. So, the two heroes, one was given an early rest by his coach, and the other one is now in the send bed. Hughes takes the tap. Sherwin tries to put it forward through the middle. Play by Chris Ahmed and Mason will score. But you can't stop him. You can't stop him from that range, I should say.
say. Mason gets Canterbury's third try. 46-14. We've seen Willie Mason score like that earlier this season against the West Tigers. The game's a very good run. We freeze it there. You can see the big man has gone back that way and that caught this outside defender. He didn't realise that Mason was coming back into that gap as play continues until the big man was already passed. Put that down. We'll have another two points. Running in some late ones, the Bulldogs. We'll take a break. Back with you after this kick. I will stay with the kick. I do apologise. And just straight between the high diddle diddle. 71 minutes gone, 46-16 the score. We're hoping to talk to Andrew Johns when we come back. Back at Energy Australia Stadium here in Newcastle. On the side leading 46 points to 16. Canterbury have scored the last two tries. To go with the first try they scored in the match was scored by Canterbury. Simpson right up in the face of Asatasi, who did very well to get it off to Sherwin. Inside their own 20 metre line there. And Asatasi again, and hammering a hole up the middle. It's on it, draws, Hughes runs away. Here comes the chase, Patton's got the ball. Put the ground, not held. Hughes will make it. Hughes gets it over the line. Canterbury have gone in again. Last three tries for Canterbury in quick time. They are up against a 12-man team as well and a tired team in the night shift. Well, they've basically worn themselves out with their attacking game. Lovely short ball there from Asatasi. And they did well. Corey Hughes, former inside back, backed up well. Luke Patton here goes to ground under the Gidley tackle but had the presence of mind to find Corey Hughes who crosses, has him again, will convert this, a flurry of late points for the damage well and truly done by half-time. This is all cosmetic at the end. 46 to 20. And has him getting another two for the Dogs, 46-22, Matthew Johns. Yeah, a little disappointing, isn't it, yeah, when you're a player? Yeah, it's nothing like winning 46-0 or 46-2, 46-6. And I imagine for a coach, Gus, as well, you know, 46-30 just hasn't got the same ring. And apart from that, it's a bad habit to get into. Not only the scoreline and dropping off the back end of the game, when Andrew's gone off, they've really dropped off. And that's a worry for Newcastle. The same doubt remains. They might go undefeated, but if Andrew Johnson's not there on grand final day, can they win it? Side day. Mason. Held by Tanner and Reynoldson. And another one in there as well. Woolmo. Canterbury. Wrecking on three tries very quickly. Asatasi. Just inside his 40 metre line. Played back to Hughes. It's gone on to Sherwin. Inside ball for Ryan. Ryan comes to Perry and Woolmo. And they're almost up to the halfway line. Badiris in the sin bin for a professional foul. Sherwin stuttered. Gave it on there to Holdsworth. Pulled down by Tanner and uh, also by Kurt Gidley. Here's Corey Hughes making another gap. 28 metres out from the line. Patton uses the blind side. Uses Willie Tonga. Tonga throws a pass to Emilio. Emilio with it and six more tackles. And Emilio is held and put to ground. Five metres out from the line. So it's with Sherwin. Then to Holdsworth. Throws the dummy and Reynoldson plays the man with the football. And pegs him. Puts him on the ground. Now from Patton. Out to Sherwin, inside for Grimaldi. The play back to Sherwin at acting half. A blindside play, put the ball on the boot, came off Newcastle, didn't play at the ball, went back to Canterbury. So then nine away from the line. Tackle count didn't restart. Mason, Asatasi. And Roy Asatasi, a couple from the line. Can they do it again? Grimaldi, a hit and spin, got it on to Sherwin. Five gone for the dog. 
Mason's ready. He wants the ball. Here's Mason. Ball out the back. Lost. Good defence. Really good defence. It's hard to be grim when you don't have to be. 46-22. Five minutes left on the clock. It's not all that important. But with 12 men, they just stood their ground there. The Bulldogs threw plenty at them. And they turned them away. That's a positive sign. On the other thing of what Matty Johns was saying, if I'm the Bulldogs coach, I take no solace in this last late flurry of the game. Whether I get beat 46-6 or 46-30, as the losing coach, I don't feel any better. I reckon that set of six in defence for Michael Hagen will just about be the, the thing that he enjoyed most out of this game. He wants his side to be mentally tough, and that was mental toughness there, as, as Gus pointed out. It could have been, e would have been easy to crack there. It was tougher to keep the opposition out as Kurt Gidley struggles for an extra couple of metres, takes it outside the 40, and Craig Smith puts his hand up again. Three and a half minutes of this game remaining. Johns will finish the match with a, a tally of 18 in the game. Kurt Gidley's kick fielded by Hazem El Masri. Matthew sideline. The Rams are sitting here between two fine footballers and well, two fine men as well. Brian Kane and Andrew Johns. Andrew, first 60 minutes of the game, fabulous. Yeah, outstanding. We uh, just punched through the middle. Uh, I think you know, our forwards need a big wrap, especially our two front rowers. They, you know, they just slaughtered them in the middle and uh, a good effort, unfortunately, a bit tidy. Late, but still a win. Hey, some of these young guys, they look, they look so much fitter. Uh, they've got a spring in their step. Gus said they're galloping to the line tonight. It must have been a good off-season. Yeah, look, we recruited well in the off-season. Also, in our support staff, we're a lot stronger and fitter. I think it shows. You know, guys, Dan Toller, Todd Lowry, these young players are a year older. They're, they're starting to look like men. Mate, uh, just on looking like men, the beard, please explain it to us. Oh, well, I promised my girlfriend that uh, as soon as I'm... I let, let myself down in bed, I'll shave it off. Another try That'll coming up for Canterbury, I fancy Amelia. Well, well, there we go. We might just leave it at that. Uh, we move on to Brian Carney at the moment. Brian, look, uh, the NRL English Super League, have you found the adjustment? Uh, it's been it's been hard, but hopefully get a win tonight. That's been three wins for the club, and that's the best way we, anybody can hope to start a season. We're real happy with how we're going. Leaked a few points late tonight, which is disappointing, but stopped the try there. We're pretty happy. And what about uh, playing outside Matthew Gidley? Hey? Pretty handy. Sensational. He's... Uh, one of the best centres I've ever had the pleasure of playing outside and hopefully uh, continue that throughout the season. Just a cork tonight? Just a cork, mate. So you stay off the Guinness, OK? And the wife said you've got to stay away from me as well, OK? I won't forget the wallet this time. Craig Smith, the boys talking about their demons. Andrew Johns. I've got some bad news for Andrew Johns. I saw his girl at the shop today buying razor blades. So I don't know what's happened there. Well, you've got to go to sleep sooner or later, Joey. As the ball is rolled into touch, just winding the clock down. Yeah, it hit Rennie Matua with a kick, but not played at. And the ball taken out of the arms of Andrew Emilio in the far corner. And the rule went up with about three or four to go, the Newcastle chant. We heard it a little bit late last season, but it was back in full voice tonight. I think we'll hear it again on many occasions. I think that's a key part of tonight. We came here expecting a great game. We didn't get it. Newcastle were just too good. But the great thing about the night is that the Newcastle Knights are back in this competition. A dreadful year for them last year. They finished it off proudly, and they've bounced out of the blocks this year. When Newcastle's going well, the rugby league competition is so much better. And these Newcastle fans have got a lot to look forward to this season. Good turnout tonight. Good performance by their team. A sign of better things to come. Good on them. Dogs against 12 have rattled on a few points, points of respect, I suppose. Patton down short side, Grimaldi, and the two has lost it. And it has come down with David Siege, I think. Played inside the 30 metre line. And the Bagheera's back out there as. Bulldogs' defence will be penalised once again. So Newcastle back to their full complement. Well, he was out there. Almost 
is unnecessarily really as the ball is put over the sideline the last play and that is it Newcastle have had a comprehensive win Dogs with 16 players lost Utah early but 46 to 22 seven tries played four tries and the man of the match is Andrew Johns kicked in play 13 times 18 personal points for the game a rugby league superstar he got an early break and when he came off the sin bin for Badiris Canterbury piled a few tries together but the damage was already done. Newcastle will tomorrow morning be the new favourites on their own for the Premiership. And now, don't forget Sunday by the way, Broncos Eels, 6.30 Sydney time after the news and then to the Com Games closing ceremony. Talking of the Com Games, the completion of day nine of competition at the Melbourne Games coming up for you now from Newcastle. It's good night everyone.